Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Tommy. I'm a human nutrition student and researcher at the university. What I do in this type of videos is to synthesize the classes I have at the university. Today we're going to start a new series of videos in which we're going to talk about pharmacology and nutrition. Why pharmacology? Because you have to know that there are some people, well a lot of them, that take medications and medications can have interactions with the food we eat. So we have to know which interactions are present to correctly adapt the diet to the individual. So let's begin. Pharmacology and nutrition. Introduction. So the role of the nutritionist here is to know the patient and fuck. So the role of the nutritionist here is to know that the patients take different medicines. The objective is to know the drugs to adjust the diet accordingly. This is the object versus non-object pathology. Getting sick is natural, is a natural thing. And uh, throughout history, there have been natural, magical and religious remedies to those diseases. The objective was to heal. The ways of healing are material, energetic, such as acupuncture and uh, mixed ones as well. And then because of that, the therapeutic pharmacology appears. Therapeutics comes from precepts and remedies and the pharmacology active substances, such as drugs. There are three types mainly, the allopathic drugs, that are based on the opposite to counteract the disease, the homeopathic, which are based on the similar substance, and also substitutive, this is based on correcting deficits. Then we have some vocabulary to learn. So the drugs vocabulary. Medication for human use is a substance which restores health by correcting physiological functions in humans. The active substance is a substance with pharmacological, immunological or metabolic function inside the medication. The excipient is anything other than the active substance or the packaging material and it is organoleptic. Then we have the pharmaceutical form which is the method of administration of the drug. It can be solid, liquid, semi-liquid, semi-solid and also gaseous. Then we have the drug types. We have the generic medication which is a drug that has the same active substance and pharmaceutical form, therefore you can find it everywhere. Compounding, which is a specific medicinal product created on demand and you need the medical prescription for it. Then we have the official preparation, which is a specific medicine created by a pharmacy without prescription. So this is like uh, your local store in the area makes specific drug that they only do. And then we have also investigational medicinal product, which are not marketed in the final stages or they are marketed with a known technical data sheet. And we discovered that it cures something else as well. So it's in an investigation phase. Drug sources can be natural, semi-synthetics, synthetics, genetic engineering and the cell procedures. These in there are biotechnologies. Then drug properties. Drug properties such as physical chemical properties of solubility and chemical structure, the action, active substance, mechanisms of action, how it acts in the body, pharmacological effect, the observable response to the medicine, adverse effect, an unexpected response. Then we have therapeutic indication, which are the conditions in which the drug is good for us, contraindications, the reasons why the medicine is not recommended to be taken, interactions, which is uh, what we are going to focus on, which are the changes in the therapeutic effect due to other substances, such as food, and bioavailability, which is the amount of the active substance that reaches the blood, the bloodstream intact. Drug kind, those who need a prescription, then the advertising drugs, those for hospital use, those who need an inspection visa. This is, for example, a specific treatment for a specific disease, such as rare type of cancer, whatever. And the foreigners, which are imported drugs. Then we have to understand the therapeutic process. There are some concepts here to keep in mind. Patient treatment characteristics. So this is basically saying that the, the treatment we give a patient must be specific to him or her and uh, it has to be compatible with their lifestyle for example. Therapeutic adherence has something to do with that as well. Medication error is something avoidable and adverse reaction is something not avoidable. These can be mistaken but they are different even if they look the same. Way of transmission affects efficacy of treatment. So we have different ways of giving the drug 
So we have the oral or integral way, which is through mouth, local or systemic effect, and is not equal to the sublingual, because in the sublingual there is an absorption in the mouth and uh, it goes straight to the bloodstream. And it also depends on uh, the pKa and the pH. Then the influence is pharmaceutical form, the pH, the peristalsis, the drugs and the food. Again, interactions. Then we have the parenteral way, which must be sterile, apirogenic and isotonic. Types, we have the intravenous, the intramuscular and subcutaneous. In the intravenous we have the bolus, which is maximum 20 milliliters and it lasts for minutes. Intermittent, 50 to 500 milliliters, 30 minutes. Continuous, 500 to 1000 milliliters, 24 hours. This, is, this goes directly to the bloodstream. Intramuscular, up to 5 milliliters. This goes to the muscle. And subcutaneous, under the skin, up to 2 milliliters. Other ways of transmission are topical. Topos means place. So, for example, I have knee pain. Well, I will put something on my knee. Percutaneous, uh, which are systemic. Inhalatory, with inhalers. Rectal, depository. Ocular, eye drops or ointments. Nasal, drops or spray. And otic, such as solutions. So now, the nutritionist role here is to know what drugs the patient takes and when. Because if we say that a patient needs a drug and to be taken when fasted, that means one hour before eating or two hours after. With the meal is during the meal or right after the meal and separated from the meals must be at least two hours away from a meal. Now let's take a look at pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics are the study of the evolution of the drug in the body. Basically, we have five stages here which are grouped here in this acronym L-A-D-M-E, LADME, which stands for liberation, absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion. And uh, because of these, we have graphics, plasma level cubes. So this is a graphic of uh, an administered drug. We have the Cmax, which is the maximum concentration, stands here. This is the concentration in the plasma, in the body. Tmax is the time to reach the Cmax, which is this, this one. The MEC is the minimum effective concentration. So if it doesn't go up this point, the drug is not effective. The latent period, which is the time it needs to reach the minimum effective concentration, this one here. Then the AUC is the area under the curve, which uh, stands for the bioavailability of the drug. The therapeutic range, which goes from the minimum effective concentration here to the minimum toxic concentration. The minimum toxic concentration, well, uh, after that you get uh, toxic effects. Duration of action is this one, from when it starts to be effective to the last. And then we have the intensity of action, which is this one here, from the minimum effective concentration to the con maximum concentration. Having that in mind, we can go and see the different stages. Liberation is to disintegrate, to dissolve and diffuse the medication. Therefore, we can absorb it. Absorption, variability factors such as physical chemical, drug formulation and physiological variables. We absorb by simple diffusion and the liposibility of the drug is very important. More fat soluble, easier to absorb. The pH, non-ionized form, is always better. Drug characteristics, ion trapping. Ion trapping is a phenomenon that happens when uh, there's a difference in the pH and because of the pKa of the drug, it gets trapped in one side of the barrier and cannot go into the other one because of an interaction with the pH. That's called ion trapping. Filtration and active transplantation, such as pinocytosis, are also ways of absorbing drugs. So, a little recap here. Mouth, we have little absorption. In the esophagus, we have no absorption. In the stomach, we have liberation and absorption, mainly liberation. And in the intestine, we have absorption of the rest that has not been absorbed in the stomach. High blood flow equals higher absorption. Higher peristalsis, lower absorption, because there is less time of contact. Distribution, higher speed of distribution equals less drug effect. Distribution volume is equal to the administrated drug versus the plasma drug. 
fat soluble drugs can get inside the cells and this is because of basic biology forms of the drug it can be either free or bound to proteins the free drug is around one percent and it is the active form then the drug bound proteins it can be bound to albumin beta globulin or alpha glucoprotein this is reversible and the bond to proteins is the reservoir so when the one percent gets used we can reverse and uh, free more drug to get the effect indeed fat soluble drugs can enter adipose tissue as well so we can store some drugs in the adipose tissue then we have the elimination the elimination happens in two ways and uh, we have the metabolization and excretion that's why we have the lad me me but they are two ways of elimination indeed metabolization is the conversion of chemicals into metabolites hydrosoluble are easier to eliminate because we have the liver the kidney the plasma in the intestinal epithelium that will easily get rid of them and here we have to understand something so there is a cytochrome the cytochrome p450 which is the main responsible for metabolization if this guy works then we have a good metabolization of the drug if it doesn't then we do not metabolize the drug at all so an inductor is a substance that increases the activity of the cytochrome p450 therefore we have less drug availability and it may lead to an ineffective drug whereas an inhibitor of the cytochrome p450 will lead to higher drug availability and to toxicity biotransformation reactions are the ones that will help us get rid of the drug to metabolize it properly we have two phases the phase one is the via oxidation reduction or hydrolysis we here we try to increase the polarity and therefore this will increase the elimination polarity elimination phase two is binding to endogenous polar substance this will ensure the polarity because this substance is much bigger therefore it will increase the drug size and this substance is already polar factors involved in these biotransformations are physiological genetics metabolization speed is genetic pathological and uh, iatrogenic as well then we have excretion can be renal or intestinal mainly three phases the glomerular filtration which uh, is basically creation of urine and this happens via filtration by size this only works for the free drug so in the glomerular filtration we only filter the free drug by size then number two we have the active tubular secretion it is a secretion in the proximal tubule this is uh, in the kidney of course and this happens via facilitated diffusion we filtrate the ionized form then passive tubular reabsorption is what happens at the end and uh, in the proximal and distal tubule and here we treat the non-ionized form so you have to know that th there is one step for each free drug glomerular filtration ionized form of the drug active tubular secretion non-ionized form tubular reabsorption therefore the excretion is the filtration plus the active secretion minus the passive reabsorption as you can see non-ionized form gets reabsorbed and gets in the bloodstream again now we talk about well not really we talk about nutrients here i have a video in my channel that discusses this in much more detail and you can go watch it to understand this even better here i talk about digestion and absorption mechanisms such as what happens in the mouth in the stomach in the intestines and it's already explained uh, quite well